dear students today we will be discussing about biochemical conversion process for power generation then we will discuss the design aspects of anaerobic digestion and then value addition to the byproduct of anaerobic digestion which is nothing but vermicomposting and then socio-economic aspects of biogas technology. Now without delay let us take a look on aerobic and anaerobic decomposition. What is aerobic decomposition? In aerobic decomposition aerobic bacteria decomposes biomass to produce mainly carbon dioxide and ammonia. The total carbon component completely gets oxidized to produce carbon dioxide and no fuel is produced in this aerobic decomposition. In case of anaerobic decomposition, biogas is produced from wet biomass with about 90 to 95 percent water content by the action of anaerobic bacteria. The part of carbon is oxidized and another part is reduced to produce carbon dioxide and methane which are the primary composition of biogas. And this bacteria lives in oxygen deficit condition. Now let us have a look about the technology. So, if we talk about the biogas technology, it comprises of three components, inlet tank, fermentation chamber and outlet tank. Sometimes we call this inlet tank as mixing chamber. Here we mix the feedstock with water at a regulated percentage and then we introduce here in the fermentation chamber. where microbial activity will take place. And in this reactor we generate biogas because about 33 percent of the volume of this entire volume if we consider fixed dome biogas plant is occupied by gas. And this gas can be used for cooking, other thermal applications and generation of electricity. If we have appropriate engine and generator. Lastly, the slurry what we get out of this anaerobic digestion process can be directly applied in paddy field or maybe vegetable gardens. And if we are really interested to augment the quality of the fertilizer, then we can go for vermicomposting technology. So, we will elaborate all those aspects in the coming slides. Now, what are the feedstocks we can use in an anaerobic digester. It may be kettle dung, vegetable waste, it may be cooked or an uncooked, co-digestion that means kettle dung plus kitchen waste and also sometimes we can use and feed in the anaerobic digestion something like organic pills, newspaper, tea waste and these are called additives. These, will, these elements will increase the microbial activity. So, depending upon the situation we can suggest this kind of raw materials for a plant. Now let us come to this fermentation chamber. Here all those microbial activity will take place. We will explain what are different categories of microorganisms present. Most importantly what we need to learn about hydraulic retention time in short we call as HRT and design aspects. So, HRT itself is a design parameter which is defined something like if the volume of this plant is V and then we are feeding say V daily then this HRT is defined as V by small v that is this volume may be meter cube this is meter cube per 
they so it will be in days. So, it varies from 40 to 55 or maybe 60 days depending upon the weather condition. So, based on the requirement we can go for design. So, normally this biogas plant is specified as cubic meter, maybe 1 cubic meter or cum or maybe 2 cum, 2 cubic meter. That means, it is expected that 1 cubic meter gas will be generated on a particular day. Right? So, based on that we can have our own design to meet our requirement. Of course, there are some challenges something like purification of biogas. If we can purify the biogas, then this biogas can be resembled like natural gas. Okay? So, in nutshell biogas constitutes methane and carbon dioxide primarily. Of course, there are some other element like hydrogen sulphide, nitrogen and H 2 O, but these are very traces amount. And this produced through the decomposition of organic matter by the action of anaerobic bacteria in the absence of oxygen. And this composition, this percentage of carbon dioxide and methane depends upon that kind of feedstock we use for a particular process or particular digester. Since we are using it, then we are not polluting it. We are generating this methane and we are burning it and we are generating heat as well as electricity. If this we could not have done, then it could have been impacted very badly because methane is major greenhouse gas. It is about 22 times dangerous than carbon dioxide and methane contributes about 20 percent of greenhouse gases. Now, let us have a look about the installed capacity of biogas plants. So, in India till 2019 about 16 megawatt capacity plant has been installed, whereas in worldwide it will be about 20,000 megawatt which is equivalent to 20 gigawatt has been installed. As you see in case of India, the installation of biogas is increasing with time In same thing whole goods for worldwide as well. And it is expected that it will rise because we need to handle lot of waste what we generate in our day to day life. So, what are different advantages of anaerobic digestion? First is the anaerobic digestion of waste material is used to produce renewable energy. It produces fuel and fertilizer with better quality. On the top of it, it is organic. Energy security that means energy requirements of some industries can be fulfilled through anaerobic digestion of waste generated by themselves or within the industries. Digesters can be used for stabilizing the sewage of rural communities by reducing the incidence of disease caused by the parasites and pathogens. It also reduces greenhouse effect and landfills. So, let us have a look about the feedstocks. So, this kind of feedstocks can be used and we can see here the amount of feedstocks we can generate per head. Suppose, if we are interested about cow dung, so one cow can generate about 10 to 15 kg of dung and if we talk about gas yield, it is about 0 0.34 cubic meter per kg of dry matter. So, we can see for other raw materials as well and you can see how much we can get per head and then what is the gas generation potential. So, these values will be requiring while solving the numerical problems. 
Suppose for example, if we use cow dung, so we must know how much amount one cow can give or provide and what is the gas potential. So, these values are required while designing a biogas plant. And what are different models of biogas digesters? Primarily, it can be classified into two groups, fixed dome type and floating drum type. Under fixed dome type, we have Dinbondu model, Zonta model, Samriddhi model and duplex model. For your information, these two model has been developed by IIT Guwahati. And floating drum, we have exclusively KVIC model, which is quite popular for large scale power generation. So, these schematics, these two and photographs what you see, these are all fixed dome type biogas plant. So, here you can see this is the mixing chamber, fermentation chamber and then this is the outlet and gas can be collected from the top of this hemisphere. Okay? So, here what happens when gas generates, so gas will give a pressure on the interface and because of this pressure, this will move out and this will go out and this is something like self displacement. So, when gas generates, it will give pressure and then slurry will come out and if we take out the gas, then this material will go in and give a pressure and that gas can be utilized and we can do the processing. So, similar thing hold good for this configuration as well. So, structure is fixed, there is no moving parts. So, we are feeding the biomass here and microbial activity will take place here and through this slurry will come out and gas will be generated here and this will give a pressure and this will go out and when we are collecting it, so slurry will give a pressure and then we can get the gas out. But there will be some operational difficulties with time if we do not do the maintenance, then there will be scum formation at the interface between the gas and the slurry. And sometimes this interface is so thick, so gas produced here cannot come through this interface and this gas will go out here. So, that is how we do not get the gas even though it is generated inside the plant. So, we need to take extra care about these aspects and of course, we need to check pH value sometimes because if the pH value of this slurry goes down 5, then microbial what is present inside the digester cannot sustain. So, they will fall in the stress and because of that gas production will reduce significantly. So, there are many more parameters we need to check in order to operate the biogas plant smoothly. In case of floating drum type, there is a drum, this drum will float. So, feeding is done through this mixing chamber and this pipe and this releases here and gas is generated. So, gas will give a push and this will go out and gas can be collected from the top and this is a steel structure. Okay? And this weight of this mild steel is also very high and it will give a pressure and that way this slurry will come out in the outlet tank. Okay? But mostly this kind of arrangement is made for large scale power generation. So, let us see the important comparison between floating drum and fixed dome type biogas plant. So, if we talk about cost, cost is somewhat more because we need to install a steel drum, but in case of fixed dome all our machinery work. Corrosion is more because steel is used and while generating biogas, hydrogen sulphide is also produced and this reacts with the steel and it produces acids and that is how maintenance is more in case of floating drum type biogas plant compared to the fixed dome type biogas plant. But if we talk about gas production which is significantly higher in case of floating drum type biogas plant compared to the 
fixed dome type bios plan. So, all other components can also be seen like kind of thermal insulation is bad because it is a metal. So, conductivity of the metal is high compared to the bricks and all. So, heat loss will be there because heat is also important while promoting the microbial activity inside the biogas plant. And then we have gas pressure is constant, but here it is variable because steel structure maintains the constant pressure. And uh, for fixed dome machinery work is there, so skill manpower is required. Okay. And uh, repairing of defect in the gas holder is easy in case of floating drum, but it is difficult in case of fixed dome because someone has to go inside. But going inside is also very, very difficult because methane concentration will be there even though we clean the biogas plant. Then if someone goes in, then it will be difficult to survive. So, that is how sometimes second tests are performed. So, first second is introduced there to see whether second is live or not. Then if second is doing good, then people can enter to do the maintenance. So, it is a difficult job. So, now let us discuss the anaerobic digestion processes. So, here we are collecting all those waste which contains carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. So, this is converted to amino acid with the help of a microorganisms called cellulitic, lipolytic, proteolytic microorganisms and this process is known as hydrolysis. Then this amino acids and sugars are converted to fatty acid with the help of a fermentive microorganisms and this process is known as fermentation acidogenesis. Then this fatty acid is converted to acetate and hydrogen with the help of hydrogen producing microorganisms the process is known as fermentation acetogenesis. And finally, this acetate and hydrogen converted to methane and carbon dioxide with the help of methogenic microorganisms and the process involved is known as methanogenesis. And this is the steps of anaerobic digestion. So, finally, what we are concerned about amount of methane and carbon dioxide generated in the anaerobic digester. Now, let us pay attention about the chemical reactions, how it is happening inside the anaerobic digester. So, this is nothing but glucose reacts with water which produces hydrogen and acetic acid. Of course, carbon dioxide will be generated. Then this acetic acid broken down to methane and carbon dioxide and ethanol also generated in between that ethanol reacts with carbon dioxide. It produces methane and acetic acid and already produced carbon dioxide and hydrogen both reacts and produces methane and H2O. So, if you see the overall reaction will be something like glucose converted to methane and carbon dioxide. So, 3 mole of methane and 3 mole of carbon dioxide. So, this is the overall reaction from glucose to methane and carbon dioxide. Right? Now, if we see the energy efficiency of conversion from this glucose to methane, let us have a look how efficient the process is from glucose to methane and carbon dioxide. So, for this we must know the molecular weight and heat of combustion of glucose. So, we can find out the molecular weight of glucose C6 H12 O6 which is nothing but 6 into C12 plus 1 into 12 then plus 16 into 6. So, if you do the calculation it will be 180 and heat of combustion of glucose is 16 megajoule per kg and molecular weight or and heat of combustion of methane is 16 and 55 megajoule per kg. 
So, now if we refer to this overall reactions that means 180 kg of glucose converted to 48 kg of methane that means 16 if we see the molecular weight of methane C12 plus 1 into 4 which is 16 and this is 3 moles multiplied by 3. So, it is 48 that is why 180 kg of glucose converted to 48 kg of methane. So, energy stored in 180 kg of glucose is equal to 180 multiplied by 16. So, it will be 2880 megajoule and stored energy in 48 kg of methane will be 48 multiplied by 55. So, it will be 2640 megajoule. So, that is how we can see the conversion efficiency this to the value of 2800. So, it will be 92 percent. So, this conversion is really a very very efficient conversion. So, even though this conversion is very efficient, but when we are talking about system level, so its efficiency decreases significantly. Hence, there is a ample scope of doing research to enhance the system level efficiency of biogas to electricity generation. So, let us have a look about fuel properties of biogas. So, two comparisons are given here with 40 percent carbon dioxide what is the caloric value. So, approximately 22 to 24 megajoule per cubic meter and without carbon dioxide it is 33 to 35 megajoule per cubic meter and octane rating with 40 percent carbon dioxide is about 110 and without carbon dioxide is 130 and ignition temperature is about 650 degrees Celsius and air to methane ratio by volume for complete combustion is about 10 is to 1. Also sometimes we are interested to know if the substance like fat, protein and carbohydrate percentages are known then equivalent biogas production can also be estimated which is required for designing a plant. So, in case of fat the biogas produced is about 1200 liters per kg of dry substrate and for protein it is 700 liters per kg of dry substance and carbohydrate it is about 800 liters per kg of dry substance and also we can see the methane percentage which is more in case of protein and carbon dioxide is more in case of carbohydrate. So, we can do the combination for maximization of biogas production. Also sometimes we are interested to know the equivalent energy. So, suppose we have produced 1 cubic meter of biogas which is equivalent to about 0.52 liter of diesel, 0.62 liters of kerosene oil, 3.5 kg of wood, 12.3 kg of cow dung cake, 1.46 kg of circles, 0.43 kg of LPG, 1.6 kg of coal and 0.47 kilowatt of electricity. So, these are some of the informations which are required while designing the plant and comparing the plant. So, these are the factors which influences the performance of a biogas plant like carbon to nitrogen ratio. So, optimum range is about 25 to 30. So, different material has different CN ratio. So, what combination is best for our application that we need to find out. Then temperature of different ranges like there are psychrophilic, mesophilic and thermophilic. If the temperature range is more then we call it as thermophilic range and if the temperature range is 35 to 40 then we call it as mesophilic temperature range and psychrophilic is up to 25 degrees Celsius. So, low temperature these microorganisms are active. So, but in our case mostly what we need is the mesophilic range where we can get more methogens production 
and as a result of which we, we can get more biogas production. And pH value is in the range of 6.25 to 7.50 which is in the range of neutrality. Noting that is also important which is defined as the amount of waste material fed per unit volume of digester capacity. Hydraulic retention time already have defined which is nothing but the average period that a given quantity of input material remains in the digester to be acted upon by the methogens. So, mathematically we can write V by small v which will be in days. Toxicity is very very important which inhibits the growth of pathogens like soap and other things cannot be faded along with the feed material which actually not good for the health of the microorganisms. Dilution and consistency of input is also important that mixture should not be too diluted and should not be too thick. Then there will be issue of lesser gas production because if it is diluted then CN ratio we could not maintain properly and then microbes cannot sustain because acidity will increase and reverse will happen in other cases. So, this dilution and consistency is very very important. So, we need to maintain total solids about 8 percent and volatile metal about 75 percent. The effect of agitation on biogas yield is also important. So, sometimes we need to provide some kind of agitation effect so that scrum can be bricked because in the interface there will be a membrane kind of thing which is known as scam. So, this has to be broken by providing some kind of agitation effect. And of course, in order to increase the biogas production rate, we should suggest some kind of additive so that microbes can multiply and generate more biogas. This table shows the CN ratios of different raw materials. The cow dung is about 25 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Poultry droppings is 5.2, which is very, very less. So, we cannot suggest directly to use poultry dropping. We need some kind of other raw materials so that resultant CN ratio come in between 25 to 30. Then you can see sugarcane tops, it is 500 CN ratio. So, different materials you can see raw sawdust it is 511 is the CN ratio, then seaweeds is 19, then raw domestic garbage is 25. So, these things can directly be fed in the anaerobic digester, bread, potato and other raw materials the household dirt is about 41. So, we need to decide what combination we should do if we do not have sufficient cow dung uh, to be used as feedstock. And uh, also the kind of retention time. So, if we use cow dung then retention time will be about 50 days if we maintain the temperature of 35 degrees C and poultry droppings is 20 days, rice straw is 33, sugar cane tops is 43 and then water hyacinth is 46 days. Also those days are important for particular climatic conditions. If the climatic condition is cold, then retention time required will be high. Now let us discuss about the volume of the digester, how big volume is required to meet the demand. So, mathematically it can be expressed as V1 is quantity of down plus quantity of water multiplied by hydraulic retention time to the density of slurry and density of slurry is normally considered as 1100 kg per cubic meter. If we consider a 1 cubic meter size biogas plant having hydraulic retention time 40 days, then V1 is calculated to be 1.81. So, this volume is about 90 percent of the total volume. So, 10 percent volume we also need to consider because of presence of bubbles of gas in the digester. So, the resultant volume will be V1 plus 0.1 into V1. So, it will be about 2 cubic meter. So, that is how we calculate the volume of the digester. So, now 
our concern is what is our demand. So, based on the demand, we can size the biogas plant. Normally, in case of KVAC model, which is floating drum type biogas plant, so its diameter varies from 1.5 meter to 6 meter and its height is varies from 3 meter to 6 meter. For fixed dome, we can define based on the requirement of the energy in terms of electricity as well as thermal. Now, let us learn about size of the gas holder. So, if we are talking about family size biogas plant, then 50 percent of the capacity of the biogas plant is you know, occupied by the gas holder. For Dinmo model, it is 33 percent of the size of the biogas plant is occupied by the gas holder that is gas is occupied about 33 percent. For community and institutional biogas plant, the size of the gas holder is about 50 to 70 percent of the size of the biogas plant, this is bigger. And when we are really interested to develop a biogas plant, we need to follow some kind of methodology or strategy. So, for this we can go for bench scale study, simulation study model and field study model. So, that is how we can develop a biogas plant, just to mention about the strategy of development of biogas plant. Now, these biogas plants can also be classified based on their relative size, function and location. So, it may be family scale biogas plant for small scale, so up to 6 cubic meter we consider as family scale biogas plant. So, if the capacity is up to 15 cubic meter per day, then we call it as farm scale biogas plant and if it is more than 15 cubic meter, we call it as centralized co-digestion plant medium to large scale. So, have a look about the family size biogas plant, it may be sinus type, this is the schematic for sinus type and this is the Indian type biogas plant. So, we have mixing chamber, fermentation chamber and then we have outlet tank or effluent channel. So, same thing here, but only some of the geometrical changes will be there. Then we will have farm scale biogas plant, we have these digesters, then gas comes and stored in a tank and again we have storage tank and this gas can be used for both thermal and electricity generation. And if we talk about centralized co-digestion biogas plant, it is something like we have animal farms, it may be cattle manure, we have pig manure, poultry manure, so all those things we need to collect it and other biomasses like industrial organic waste, then municipal solid waste and of course, this is organic part we are talking about and uh, sewage sludge. So, all those things we can collect and we take help of transportation system and then that should come to centralized biogas plant where homogenization will be done and digestion will takes place. Once digestion will takes place, then biogas will be generated and this biogas can be used for both thermal and electricity generation. And this digester can be separated and we can use it for making biofertilizer on the field, which improve the utilization of plant nutrients then reduces the consumption of fertilizers and this is organic fertilizer. So, it, it will enrich the quality of the plants and reduction of water pollution and this may be transported again and then may be stored and then this may be provided to agricultural field or maybe no it can be sale to uh, local market. So, if we see and this is altogether a integrated concept of centralized co-digestion plant 
and also we can visualize something like this. If we have crop farming, so this crop can be given to the animal farming and some of the crops may be directly used in the food industries and this animal farming, so it will generate dung that can be used in the anaerobic digestion plant and also we can use the products in the food industry say for example milks per cow we can use it for other applications and then the waste what is generated here in the industries we can use it in biogenic waste we can consider as a biogenic waste and we can use it in a anaerobic digestion plant and from there we can produce gas and then fertilizer. So, this gas can also be used for other applications. So, this is something like a closed cycle of centralized anaerobic digestion plant. Now, we will study some of the very interesting facts which is required to solve some of the design problems. This is nothing but rules of rules for sizing a biogas plant. That means, 1 kg of dry cattle dung produces 1 cubic meter of biogas, then 1 kg of fresh cattle dung contains 8 percent dry biodegradable masses, then 1 kg of fresh cattle dung has a volume of about 0.9 liters, 1 kg of fresh cattle dung requires an equal volume of water for preparing slurry and typical hydraulic retention time of slurry in a biogas plant varies from 40 to 55 days. Now, let us take an example an engine generator system running on biogas is proposed to be installed at Ornasol Prodes to produce 2 kilowatt of electric power. We need to estimate the volume of the digester of the biogas plant required to meet the demand. The calorie value of biogas is given, it is 20,000 kilojoule per cubic meter. Efficiency of generator is given, is 90 percent, and engine efficiency is 30 percent. Hydraulic retention time is given as 40 days. So, we can write this biogas plant engine generator and electric power unit to generate and that is 2 kilowatt. Okay. So, the input energy required will be output by generator efficiency and again input to the engine is equal to the output divided by generator efficiency and engine efficiency. So, input to the generator is about 2.22 because generator efficiency is 90 percent. So, power input to the engine here is 2 divided by 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.3 which is 7.4 kilowatt. The quantity of biomass required will be 7.4 kilowatt divided by 20,000 kilojoule per kg this is a calorie value. So, from here you can find out the quantity of biogas required which is equal to 0 0.00037 cubic meter per second. So, for continuous operation biogas required is equal to this multiplied by 3600 into 24. So, this is per second we want for a day. So, it will be 31.96 cubic meter per day. So, dry cow dung required will be 31.96 kg per day. So, mass of fresh cow dung required will be 31.96 divided by 0 0.08. So, this was discussed in the last slide. So, this value need to be utilized. So, it will be about 400 kg per day and volume of the fresh cow dung will be 0 0.9. So, it will be 399.6 multiplied by 0 0.9 which will be equal to 359.6 liter per day. And same amount of water need to be added to make a slurry. 
to introduce in the fermentation chamber. So, volume of the slurry will be this multiplied by 2. So, this will be 719.2 liters per day and hydraulic retention time is 40 days and this has to be there inside the digester. So, that is how volume of the digester will be this multiplied by 40 and this is the volume of the digester which is equivalent to about 29 cubic meter volume. Okay. So, this 29 cubic meter size by gas digester is required to power 2 kilowatt. Okay. So, that way we can design once we know our requirement then we can think of the size of volume required. Again we can take an example an anaerobic digester need to be designed to meet the cooking and lighting demand for a six member family. Lighting is required for 4 hours with 600 cp this is candle power lamps. In the digester cow dung is used as feedstock. We need to calculate the volume of the biogas plant and required number of cows to feed the plant. Considering the density of the slurry is 1100 kg per cubic meter, biogas required for cooking is about 0.227 cubic meter per person per day and gas required for lighting a 100 cp mental lamp is 0.126 cubic meter per hour. And of course, we need to utilize this data because cow dung is used in the plant. So, how much dung is produced by a single cow? and then what is the gas potential. So, we will solve this problem now. A gas required for cooking for the family for cooking for the family which is equal to 6 multiplied by we have this value 0 0.227 which is equal to 1.362 cubic meter per day and B is the gas required for lighting which is equal to we have 6 hours and 4 hours and 6 lights 6 into 4 multiplied by we have 100 cp 2 there are 100 cp 600 cp so 100 cp is equal to 1.26 cubic meter per hour so once we multiply it it will be something like equal to 3.024 cubic meter per day. So, if we add this A plus B which is nothing but total daily gas required for the family will be 1.362 plus 3.024 which is nothing but 4.8 cubic meter which is the total daily gas required for the family. Okay. So, now we need to find out the number of cows required let us consider n be the number of cows okay. and we need to consider maybe 10 kg we can expect from a single cow. So, we can have cow dung produced which 
which will be equal to 10 into n okay, and this will be kg per day and we know this collectible cow dung is about 70 percent. Okay. So, collectible cow dung will be 70 percent. So, it will be 0 0.7, so 70 percent of 10 into n. So, which is 0 0.7 into 10 into n. So, finally, it will be 7 into n. This is kg per day. And now weight of dry solid mass which is 18 percent in cow dung which is equal to 0 0.18 into 7n which is equal to 1.26 n kg per day. Okay. So, now gas production per day is about 0.34. So, gas production for n number of cows per day will be 0.34 multiplied by 1.26 into n. Okay. So, this will be cubic meter per day. Right. So, now this has to be equal to this one, so that we can find out the number of cows required. Okay. That means, number 1 and this may be number 2. So, equating these two 1 and 2, so it will be something like 0 0.34 into 0 0.18 into 7n is equal to 4.386. So, that means n will be something like 10.23. So, we can say that is 10 number. So, 10 numbers of cows are required to meet the demand. Okay. And now, we need to find out daily feeding of cow dung will be 10 multiplied by 7. Okay. So, it will be 70 kg. Right. And to make the slurry, we need to add same amount of water. So, to make slurry, the total volume will be 70 into 2, which will be 140 kg. Because same amount of water has to be added. So, that is how it is 140 kg. Right. Now, if we need to find out the daily feed of slurry, the daily feed of slurry, then we need to take help of the density 140 divided by 1100. So, this will be about 0 0.1272 cubic meter. Okay. So, if we consider or say for 50 day retention time, retention time, the volume of the slurry in the digester will be Fifty multiplied by zero point one two seven two, which is equal to six point three six cubic meter. Okay, 
So, this is equivalent to 90 percent of the volume. So, total volume will be 6.36 plus 6.36 into 10 percent okay, total volume. So, which will be equal to about 6.99 cubic meter and this is approximately 7 cubic meter. Okay. So, this 7 cubic meter uh, is the digester volume and the amount of slurry needed or amount of heat stock needed can also be calculated. Right? Now, let us discuss some of the aspects if gas production goes down in the winter season, then we need to have some kind of heating provision. So, there is an attempt by utilizing solar energy trying to heat the water in the evaporated tube and that water is circulated with the help of a circulating pump and then heat exchanger assembly. So, that gives the uniformity of the temperature which is very very important for biogas production. So, this kind of heat exchanger is designed and installed at the bottom of the anaerobic digester. And as you can see this is the stair which is attached to break the scam and many thermocouples are installed to monitor the temperature inside the digester. So, if we see here the different graphs can be generated like gas production uh, with respect to wicks then pH value variation, then variation of temperature. So, if we compare the temperature fluctuations, so when we have this heating arrangement, so we got this uniform temperature which is very, very important for the growth of the microorganisms. Otherwise, they will be under thermal stress and they could not work much to generate biogas. And uh, if we talk about byproduct of biogas, it is something like very good fertilizer, so which can be upgraded by using vermicomposting. So, for vermicomposting, we need three pits pre compost, compost, and vermicompost. So, these are the parameters of the fertilizers. And in vermicompost process, as I said, three pits are required in the pre compost we need to have cow dung slurry, biodegradable waste, then grasses and this has to be maintained for 15 days. Then in compost, compost pit, this all those things has to be transferred to the compost pit and all the things has to be maintained properly for 30 days like dry cow dung leaves, then cow dung slurry, water hyacinth, then cow dung slurry again, then dry grass, then plantation trees. Then in finally, we will have vermicompost pit where all those things has to be transferred to this here vermicompost pit and we need to maintain as per the specifications like grass. Then we have composted earthworm, soil, sand and pebbles and this dimension has to be maintained. Then we can have a good quality fertilizer. So, method of preparation will be something like we need to prepare a set and then we need to have three different compartment pre compost, compost and permi compost of the dimension something like 3 feet by 1.5 feet and then set has to be 25 feet by 12 feet by 8 feet. Then we have to chop those banana trees and other things which are very easy to degrade there and uh, we need to keep the things for 7 to 10 days and then we have to sprinkle slurry or cow dung water to facilitate decomposition in the precompost pit. Then the precomposted material are then transferred to the composting tank in layers and water need to be sprinkled to keep the moisture level 60 to 80 percent and then after 20 to 25 days, this composted material are to be transferred to the vermicompost pit. 
and we need to release the required quantities of earthworm. And vermicompost plant is ready after putting the earthworm, it is to be covered with dry hay and regulated amount of water need to be sprinkled, right. And then vermicompost will be ready for harvesting after 30 days. So, you can see how this is done and packaging is done finally. And we need to do some kind of precautions like need to be protected from direct sunlight. So, we need to provide some kind of sheds. Then need to be maintained moisture content of 60 to 80 percent. Need to protect from ants, rats and birds because they will take the vermis and we need to maintain the CN ratio of 30 is to 1. Then temperature should be within the range of 12 to 29 degrees Celsius and pH has to be maintained between 6.5 to 7.5. And for an example, suppose if we are processing 125 to 150 tons of organic waste per month, which will give 50 to 58 tons of dry vermicompost. For that, 1000 kg of earthworm or about 10 to 12 lakhs adult earthworms are required. And this work can be initiated with 7 lakhs of earthworm that work on organic waste. And also, we have done some kind of economic analysis for 3 different biogas plant floating drum and these two are fixed dome type biogas plant. So, you can see the comparison with respect to civil construction, cost of gas holder, cost of gas pipelines, then operating cost of the plant, then annual income, then income from the biogas in terms of LPG, then income from manure. So, all those things we can consider and evaluate the economics and it is found that like average annual profit for Zonta model is about 12,313 and payback period is about 3.75. For Dinbondu payback period is 3 and uh, for KVIC it is somewhat higher it is 6.25. So, but based on the situation and demand we should suggest the appropriate biogas technology for electricity and heating application. So, some of the social aspects also we need to know like individual level, efficient utilization of waste, clean cooking and improved lighting, then efficient utilization of time, improved sanitization, then fuel for engines for pumping and other purposes depending upon the gas supply and feed for animals and fish culture. So, these are the individual level we can think of and national level energy import reduces then uplift social and economic life in rural areas, these are the benefit we can get and in community level we can reduce the pollutant significantly, then increase productive employment and increase scope for small scale industries. So, it has got lot of socio-economic benefit in our societies. There are some challenges like cleaning of biogas, so we can augment the calorific value up to 36 which is close to natural gas energy value. Compression system is one of the challenges and then storage of biogas and bottling. So, this shows the calorific value of natural gas. So, we can go to very close to the natural gas calorific value. So, now we can summarize what we have discussed in this class. We have demonstrated how anaerobic digestion technology is helpful for rural development in sustainable way. You can see the different processes, we can have different uh, feedstocks, then we have digesters, we can generate biogas which can be used for heating and electricity generation and digesters can be used for used as fertilizer, soil amendment, then livestock feeding and then we have biomethanations, we can go for fueling vehicles and we can go for gas grid. So, biogas produced is a green replacement of unprocessed fuels like fuel wood, 
dung cake and crop residues etc. Then biogas technology has the potential to meet the energy requirement in rural areas and also counter the effects of reckless burning of biomass resources. You can see how we can use it, cook it, lighting and then fueling in the vehicles. The nitrogen rich compost indirectly reduces the cost associated with use of fertilizers which increases the income for the farmer. Being relatively clean cooking fuel, biogas reduces the health risk associated with conventional solars. Also, we have demonstrated how a biogas plant can be designed based on the requirement. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching this video.